Well, it is always a special treat to have the Pitching Ninja on A's Cast Live. How are you doing? I am doing great. How are you? We're going ninja to ninja. I busted I up my ninja it. hat today. Heck yeah, we are. That is, It looks great on you, by the way. I think it's, I, I, you really got maybe the coolest logo in sports. Like this is, this has gotten to be so great. It's almost like a team needs to pay you and adopt it as their logo. They really should. Yeah. I mean, pay me a lot is what they should do. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You want to be the San Antonio ninjas? No problem. <laughs> I want right up, baby. Yeah. Step <laughs> right up. So how are you doing? How's life? How's business? It is busy man it is uh we're coming down the stretch got a lot of there's a lot of baseball i get worn out every day it's a lot of games well you're watching a lot of pitching and at this time of the year we start to notice some things it's called fatigue it's been a long grind that's why they call this the dog days because you started in spring training you've gone through so much April, May, June, July, August now. It's been a lot of flights. It's been a lot of hotel rooms. It's so rough on you physically and maybe even tougher mentally as you're grinding so much. Do you start to see this at this time of the year, a little fatigue in pitchers? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I, I think some guys are less sharp. Other guys are just coming into their own, too. And don't forget, there are guys that play in WBC, too. That, Yeah. It, I mean, that, that was really really high level baseball for a short period of time and then you're coming back to earth and then have to build up again for the season it's a lot and i think we ignore it sometimes like it's these humans get worn down all right uh, one of the things i want to get into with you today is the sweeper because i work with some old baseball people who obviously want to view the game differently than some of us view it today and they're like, don't tell me that a sweeper is a new pitch. It's just a flat slider. I'm not going to tell you which A's great gets pissed when I bring up the sweeper, but I'm just going to tell you when I go, well, it's a sweeper. That's not a sweeper. So tell me truly, is there a difference between a slider and a sweeper? There absolutely is. And I'm not saying, look, number one, it's not necessarily a new pitch. There are guys that have thrown sweepers mostly inadvertently over the years. Like you have a Dave Steve who had a big, you know, a sweeping slider. But recently we've been, we've been able to break down why the pitch moves the way it does because of the way the seams rotate through the air. And you can actually make the ball move more horizontally than down. And usually most people think of a slider as something that would have more gyro bullet spin and break more straight down. That's what we would call a traditional slider. As you get more, it's 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 kind of a scientific principle that makes the ball move that way. Some people lucked into it over the years, but now we can teach more and more pitchers to do it. And some guys throw both. So like you have to have a name for it. I understand that people don't like change. I get that. <laughs> but but you have like you have a two seamer and a sinker, right? Like a, you can throw both of them on two seams. But a, a sinker will take will tend to go more down. A two seamer, you can throw it a front hip and break over the plate or back door it. It's horizontal movement. We call those two different things. You wouldn't call a two seamer that breaks horizontally a sinker because it really doesn't sink. So the idea I had this discussion with Sonny Gray, for example, and he got it. He was like, Oh yeah, just like my two seamer, I don't call it a sinker because I want it to break horizontally. So all we're doing is naming something that we've now been able to develop more and more. More pitchers do it because we now know why it does what it does. But it's not new. Like a square, I mean, a square is a rectangle, right? But it's a special rectangle. You know, four sides and all that. The only thing that scares me about the sweeper, and, and thinking back to my pitching days, is I know that a flat slider gets hit harder than any other pitch. It just screams hit me. Trust me, I threw a ton of them. So I'm worried. I get that sweeper coming horizontally, but it's not getting in or getting to where I want it to go. If that thing's hanging over the middle of the plate, we got problems. There's going to be like danger, danger, danger signs going off. Oh, you're, and you're not wrong about that. I mean, and the other thing is just because it's new doesn't mean everybody should throw it. There are guys that have tried to throw Fact. it. Yeah. I mean, I, I talked to Josh Hader and he had – developed a sweeper and then scrapped it because he wanted more of a bullet spin, less break, because you can control it better. 
It works better with his fastball. There's more deception. So, you know, just because it's a trendy thing doesn't mean everybody's got to add a, a sweeper because if they do, they might it might get hammered. I wouldn't recommend it for everybody. No way. Yeah, just because everybody wants to play basketball like Michael Jordan or play golf like Tiger Woods doesn't mean you can. And I I, I remember back to the late 80s and Roger Craig, everybody wanted the split finger, split finger. Yeah, well, I got small, I got small hands. It doesn't work for me. I'm just throwing that thing in the dirt over and over again. My I was better with the circle change. I mean, just because a lot of people are doing it doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. You nailed it because that's the other thing is some people can throw a good circle change that they can pronate. Other guys can't pronate very well. So you recommend them maybe a splitter and the splitter is becoming more in vogue. I would say that's got a chance at being even a bigger pitch than the sweeper. You know, it's not a new pitch, but yeah. guys really want to develop splitters. Now you saw what, what team Japan did in the world baseball classic, every one of them threw splitters. And we're seeing more and more guys. Logan Gilbert developed a splitter. George Kirby developed a splitter. You're seeing more and more guys develop it because it works. Like, it, that is a nasty yeah. pitch. It looks like a fastball and dives. You know, my generation, they wanted us to dig so far in, right? And I think that's why it didn't work for me. And you could feel it in your elbow. You don't have to dig all the way in. I mean, if you're just looking at a fastball and you split your fingers a little bit, that's all you need to do is it's disruption of timing. It's just, it looks like a fastball, drops a little bit. That is the key to the pitch instead of what they want, the old fork ball and get your hands at. You don't have to get it all the way. So young pitchers, it's just a little bit of change on your grip. You don't have to dig it all the way in there. I think that was the problem that we looked at in the late 80s and early 90s. Yeah, I think that's probably right. I mean, you have a guy like Joan Duran for the Twins who throws a splinker, which is a combination of a splitter and a sinker. So he, does, he doesn't way split his fingers. He narrowly splits his, splits his fingers. He throws it. He can throw it 101 miles an hour. So you're throwing a 101 mile an hour pitch that dives like a splitter. That is, you know, but that, that's just ridiculous. But yeah, you, anything. Okay, that wait, what timing, do we call? We're calling it a splinker. <laughs> we are. It's he, he came up with it. I didn't make that up. Yeah, it's not a I love name. It. Yeah, but it's a combination. It's it's because he throws it so hard. You, it's hard to call it a splitter at 101 miles an hour. Yeah. But if you watch it, you would say that looks like a splitter to me. It is an insane pitch. And you're right. Like nothing is new in terms of the goal of the game. The goal of the game is to disrupt the hitter's timing. We know how to do it a little more through science and whatever. But old time guys disrupted timing too. And we're coming back to a lot of that stuff. Like they had a lot of it right. We're just now being able to replicate it a little more. All right. So uh, next time I do TV with Dave Stewart, I think it's on the 8th. I'm going to have someone film it. I'm going to go, Dave, we got a new pitch. It's called the Splinker. I can't wait to get his reaction, and I'm going to send it to you. Oh, absolutely. And show him show him what in 100 and – like, I think it's one of the filthiest pitches I saw all yeah. year. I mean, it's crazy. And and he may freak out about it. Like, it's it's downright – you know, it's a deadly pitch. I, I, I'm just going to start saying it and see what people's reactions are. <laughs> hey, he threw a hell of a Splinker. I can't wait. Stuart will just, he'll just stare at you with that mean look. Oh, he'll be angry. He gets yeah. angry and he's a black belt. And he just, it, 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 it won't end well. I'm just going to tell you that. Um, when you start looking at Cy Young Award now, and I'm thinking about specifically the National League, St I know Steele's going tonight. Uh, how, how are we going to look with such a lack of production? Like, it's great to see what guys stuff and all this unbelievable things guys can do with the baseball now. But still, I need innings. I need people to go deep in games. I, I How are we going to look long-term, do you think, at the pitching awards when we're getting far less volume than we've ever had before? Yeah, I think you're going to have to kind of average. Like, I love what Sandy Alcantara did last year, putting up good numbers for a lot of innings. That's the ideal thing. Like, he was both a throwback pitcher and a new age pitcher. And, and he started to do it again, by the way. He's kind oh, of he's, he's, Stella's yeah. got her groove back. Oh, yeah. And he, and he never should have lost it. Like, that dude is a stud. Um, you know, it's hard to say. You have to, 
you do want innings and, and being good over a longer haul is more valuable to your team and a more valuable pitcher than someone that is good over a short period of time, unless they're really, really good over a short period of time. I think there's a higher hurdle for a guy that throws less, that throws fewer innings. Um, not to say you shouldn't win it if you throw fewer innings, but you've got to really impress me um, to do it versus a guy that throws more innings and also puts up good numbers. Talking about impressing you, like, what do we got tonight? We got, like, we got a ton of games. There's going to be thousands of pitches thrown tonight. And you're going to watch probably hundreds of pitches. And you do it every single day. At this point, what impresses you now that you've seen so much? What makes you go, oh, wow? You know, I... To me, there's some some of these rookies out there are incredibly good. So those guys, like seeing guys get called up, who have live arms and are throwing just filthy stuff, that always impresses me. Um, and then you have guys, you know, the off the charts guys. Like I mentioned, Duran, who, who the splinker, he also throws a curveball at 90 miles an hour that dies and has hit 105 this year. So guys like that, I drop everything and, and I'll watch that. And then just, you know, it depends. Like I like guys who are crafty as well. I mean, give me if Kyle Hendricks is on a roll. I love watching that too. Like it just, it totally depends. Yeah. There, there's, there's a lot of ways to get people out. There's no question. I, I've been talking about this. I, I don't think enough people are talking about this because we're so enthralled by velocity. Um, and we just don't know why guys elbows give out we just don't know there's not an orthopedic surgeon there's no one that's come out and there's no trainer there's no medical there's no study that someone says you do this you will get hurt but we have an alarming rate of tommy john surgeries going from big leagues to minor leagues to college to high school these kids and i've been trying to and i think you would agree because i know you've been around youth baseball surgery is not a good thing it is not a good option for some reason, people are accepting it like, oh, you know, you'll just get Tommy John. Whenever you get cut on, what it does to you physically, what it does to you mentally, it's a year of your life of rehab and trying to get back. I just hate that everybody sees this now as like some easy option. Um, I, I, to me, it's almost kind of cruel we're setting people up for this. They got to know that surgery and multiple Tommy Johns, this is not good for your life. Are you starting to worry? Because I know we love the velocity. We love pushing our bodies to the max. But the amount of guys that continue that we only hear of, we're not hearing about all the other guys, especially at the youth level, that are having the issues. Are you worried about this? I mean, you have to worry about it. I mean, watching players go through it and talking to them as they go through it, as a fan, you're sitting there going, oh, he'll be back in 18 months. But the stuff that they have to go through to get back, the disappointment, the being out of the game, the not being around their friends in the clubhouse, the everything. It's 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 definitely tough. I don't know the answer to it. If I did, I'd be rich. Um, rich. Yeah. You'd be I mean, filthy rich. I would be. And there is, but the issue also is it's hard to tell pitchers to it's hard to tell a competitor to back off. You don't tell, I mean, you're not gonna tell a anybody like a basketball player don't jump as high or run as fast or, or wide wide out you know hey i'm not gonna i'm not gonna catch a ball over the middle because i might get a concussion they do this stuff um it's 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 one of the prices unfortunately for sport but even some of the slower throwing guys though can get tommy john just because you throw slow and you're a command guy doesn't mean you're not going to get it i don't think we know the answer um, you know, we said pitch counts and all that, which I have lowered it a little bit, but there's other, there's also a thing about conditioning your arm to make sure it doesn't get hurt and throwing a little more sometimes because it helps build up the muscles around your arm to protect the ligaments. So there's no one size fits all answer. Unfortunately, Billy Bean said, anybody who figures it out will be a billionaire. Maybe he and I should get into it and try to figure this out. I mean, seriously, I mean, I know the pitching ninja thing's going great for you, but I don't, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you rather be a billionaire? I would way rather be a billionaire, yeah. I'd still can probably imagine, do this stuff. Can you, imagine but... what, can you imagine the amount of fun you could have? See, like, people go, oh, money doesn't cure problems. Yeah, we'd still have problems, but, boy, we could have a lot of fun with those problems. Yeah, I'd, I'd care a little bit less about my problems, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything new coming out? What? what what's, what? Because what? you always have something going on. Yeah, I mean, we... Yeah. 
I don't know. Like during the season, it's tough. I'm interviewing Greg Maddox on Thursday. How's that? That's what? pretty cool. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I just just confirmed it. How good is that? It's pretty darn good. Like, I mean, I don't know if you see this. There's this art on the back, and it's like 100 Greg Maddox baseball cards underneath it. It's above my glowing ninja over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be fun. And maybe we'll ask him some of these questions about, like, velocity. Ver I mean, I'm going to ask him that, right? You have to. Velocity over movement, over over command, and see what he says. You know, he I can tell you, listen to so many interviews, he, he stopped chasing velocity. That's yep. when he got better. But obviously the game was a little bit different. Maddox is interesting because he's a slow talker. Always remember that. You're not going to get like these. He's not a fast-paced guy. Maddox is a slow. I got to meet Maddox at the Las Vegas School of Baseball when I was an instructor years ago. Got to talk to him. Got to listen to him talk to the, the camp because, you know, he's a Las Vegas guy. He's absolutely fascinating. And – He's funnier than hell. He's one of the sneakiest, funny guys in the history of the game. Yeah, and that's what I want to dig into. Like, I want to get him. I mean, that's my interview style anyway, right? Like, I like the. I don't want to hear myself talk because I know what I say. I want to hear. I want to hear him talk. Key is to get him going, right? Like, I got to yeah. figure out a way to to get him to start talking. Where is it? Where can we see this? Could the the full interview? It will be on my YouTube channel when it comes out. And again, haven't done it yet. Don't know if it's going to be good or not, because I do have that same concern about like getting him to open up a little bit. But I told him to bring a baseball. We're going over pitch grips. We're going we're going yeah. deep into this. And uh, my hope is that it's going to be really good. Well, you need to let us know so we can promote it and make sure we get as many eyeballs on this thing as possible. It, absolutely like he's on the mount rushmore of guys i wanted to i interviewed uh nolan ryan in the off season too which was a lot of fun talk about opposites right like nolan ryan one of the hardest throwing pitchers ever you could say the hardest throwing pitcher ever if you want to um and then you have greg maddox who's just a pitching artist and to contrast them very different well i we i was talking about the other day and and, and when shohei went down and we've had so many guys go down lately i said hey there's only one guy in the history of the game, who's gone full throttle for over 20 years. There's only one. It's an old Ryan. Because everybody's body somehow, like even Randy Johnson, who didn't have arm problems, his back. Randy Johnson had big-time back problems. Roger Clemens kind of lost it, PEDs. There's one guy that brought it for over 20 years. And you think of all the thousands of pitchers, only one guy's been able to do it. That's an old Ryan. Yeah, and then well, his UCL finally gave out, but he was like forty-five years old, twenty-six so. years in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> okay, I mean, that's gonna happen when you're throwing ninety something at that age. Like, it's good. Let's call it a career. You're not gonna be doing that when you're fifty or something like that. But I do. Can you imagine when you look back on that? And I know we gotta go, but give it. You look back on that. Can you imagine? You're forty-six years old, still playing baseball with guys who are like twenty-two, twenty-three. I mean, how odd, just how odd would that be? Yeah, like you started your career and the dude wasn't born yet. It is it is crazy. And, you know, and he's one of those guys, I don't think he got, got caught up in the, what, the newest things. He just did what he was going to do. Although he invented stuff. Like, he was the first dude who was in the weight room pumping iron. Everybody said, you're going to get too big to throw and stuff. He was ahead of his time on a lot of things. Oh, my God. He, like, finished his outing. And then he'd go work out. The press hated. No, they loved him because he's a great guy. But the press hated. Like you literally had to wait around for an hour after the game because he was going to work out for an hour. He'd get on the bike. He'd lift weights, and then he'd come out and talk to the media. So you had to wait an entire hour after the final out. Nobody ever did that. Hey, uh, we got to pimp the merch here. Where can we get the merch? Head on over to PitchingNinja.com, and we can get you can get a cool hat like ours. I'm telling I've I've been saying it for years. We have the uh coffee mug. There's so many things you have for a baseball fan. And before now that college football's here, we can start thinking about the fall, then you know, Christmas. And you always think about, hey, I need to get somebody a gift. I'm telling I love wearing my pitching ninja hat. I told you at a football game one time, some kid goes, pitching ninja. <laughs> so people know, and I guarantee you. You go to the website, you're going to love getting a gift for somebody, and they'll truly appreciate it. Hey, all the best. Love your work. Love what you do. And uh, let's do this again soon. And I can't wait. Make sure you let us know when the Maddox interview goes down so we can promote it. 
Will do. Absolutely. And thanks for having me again.